Hey everyone, DB from Eat Sleep Cruise, where we help you see the world one part at a time. The latest cruise reviews and ship tours, tips, and the latest cruise updates. And if you've been trying to follow along this last week, you might be a bit confused. Or like us, you're even a little bit frustrated about what the return to cruising here in the US will look like. So this week, we're gonna take a look at all the developments from the past week and try to make some sense about what the future of cruising in the US will really look like. Now, so much has happened this week that it might feel like a blur. But if you recall, the week started off on a positive note with Norwegian Cruise Line submitting a letter to the CDC indicating it was ready to set sail from the US starting July 4th. In this announcement, they offered a new sail safe plan that included a robust number of health and safety protocols. Among these new additions was a requirement that all guests and crew would need to be 100% vaccinated on these initial cruises. Now, later that day, Norwegian Cruise Line Holdings Chairman and CEO Frank Del Rio stated in a CNBC interview that the health and safety protocols were ironclad, and he questioned what other venues actually on land have such a detailed and stringent plan. He was as bold to say that cruise ships will become the safest places on Earth with these new measures. Now, you've probably been hearing the stat a lot this week, but during that interview, he mentioned that over 400,000 cruise passengers have been traveling all over the world during the pandemic, and that the records show that there have been less than 50 COVID cases since cruising has resumed in places like Italy and Singapore. Not to mention that essentially the cruise lines have been able to deal with these cases without interruptions or canceling cruises. Of course, he was also adamant that he would not risk the health and safety of any guests, crew, or the community's NCL ship's visit unless he was 100% sure that the company could deliver a healthy and safe cruise. And of course, he believes that the new sail safe program does just that. It's been almost a week now, and the CDC has not directly responded to NCL's letter publicly or the sail safe program. Although there seemed to be some movement later in the week as CDC spokesperson Jade Fulsey noted that the CDC is committed to working with the cruise industry and other partners to resume cruising following the phased approach outlined in the conditional sailing order. She further went on to say that this goal aligns with the desire to resume passenger operations in the United States expressed by many of the major cruise ship operators, hopefully by midsummer with restricted revenue sailings. While that announcement gives us some glimmer of hope, it does seem like the CDC is sticking to the framework for conditional sailing order. Now, that statement actually didn't come in response to NCL statement. It actually came the following day after Carnival Cruise Line canceled all June cruises. During that announcement, Carnival Cruise Line chairman noted that while the cruise line has not made any plan to move Carnival Cruise Line ships outside of US home ports, they may have no choice but to do so in order to resume operations. The cruise line has made similar statements weeks prior when Royal Caribbean and Celebrity Cruises announced that they would start sailing in North America from the Bahamas and the Caribbean. Now, while the CDC was hopeful on Tuesday, on Wednesday, Martin Citrone, the director of the Maritime Division at the U.S. Centers for Disease Control, stated in an interview that passengers could be boarding cruise ships in U.S. ports as soon as July. According to the director, it all depends on several factors, such as how many people get vaccinated, how well the COVID-19 variants can be kept at bay, and how fast cruise companies can secure agreements with local ports and health authorities in the cities they plan to visit. Now that seems like a lot of caveats to suggest that cruising could really start in July. In the interview, he went on to state that if there were not any overwhelming fourth wave of variants that are unresponsive to the current mitigation strategies, and the cruise lines follow the guidance, they can probably get to partial resumption of cruising in July. Now, while that sounds good in theory, it's not actually the most confident statement about cruising returning to the US. It's actually this issue of mitigation that's central to the argument that CLIA, the professional organization that supports 95% of the cruise lines, laid out in its response to the CDC's technical instructions that came out a little over a week ago. That trade organization called for the framework for conditional sailing order to be lifted, stating that the new requirements were unduly burdensome, largely unworkable, and seemed to reflect a zero risk objective rather than the mitigation approach to COVID that is found in other sectors of the US economy. Clear further pointed out that this approach is actually at odds 
with the approach the CDC and governments in other parts of the world apply to all other travel and tourism. In fact, currently under the CDC recommendations, US-based travelers can travel internationally to go on a cruise, but can't actually board a cruise ship from the US. As you recall, the same day the technical instructions were released, the CDC changed its recommendations for vaccinated travelers to fly internationally, indicating such travel was now low risk. And that brings us to Thursday, where there was perhaps the most bizarre development in all of this, when the Florida governor, Ron DeSantis, announced that the state was suing the CDC. In that lawsuit, the governor and his attorney general were asking for the judiciary to set aside the government's unlawful conditional sailing order. The governor cited the tens of thousands of individuals that are out of work due to the conditional sailing order. And he also referenced that the guidelines are too cumbersome and that cruising should be immediately reopened. Now, none of the cruise lines have directly commented on the lawsuit or joined the lawsuit. And as far as we know, this is the first attempt to use the courts to try to get cruising back up and running in the US. When questioned by the media, representatives from Carnival Cruise Line were quoted as saying that they share the governor's sense of urgency to get cruising back up and running, but want to work with the CDC to safely resume cruising. In a similar vein, NCL representatives failed to comment directly regarding the lawsuit although they point out that their new safety health protocols do align to the CDC's recommendation and that they were looking forward to partnering with the CDC to get cruising up and running. An interesting aside, Spectrum News actually pointed out that NCL's current requirements of 100% vaccinated cruises actually conflicts with the executive order signed by Ron DeSantis last week banning vaccine passports or official documentation showing proof of COVID-19 vaccinations to receive services from a business or local government. So will Florida actually cave on this new order if vaccinations become a requirement to get cruising up and running in the US? Some in the industry were supportive of the lawsuit. For example, representatives from Port of Tampa stated they were appreciative that the governor, Ron DeSantis, is looking for solutions to bring about the safe return of cruising. Now, most legal experts who have commented on the story agree that the lawsuit has little legal merit for several reasons, and we're not gonna hash those out here. But what this latest move does show is that there is such a level of contention that exists between the CDC, government officials, and the cruise industry. Of course, we agree with the governor's overall message that we need to get cruising restarted here in the US. But is suing the CDC really the answer? Could such a move actually backfire? We can't imagine the CDC deciding to change its recommendations and protocols based on such a move. Then on Friday afternoon, Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg said in a news conference that the cruise lines could resume operations by July if they meet the current federal requirements. He also stated that he wants to see the cruise industry thrive, but the cruise lines need to go through certain gates before they can get the okay to start sailing again from the US. So this basically just puts us back to where we already were with the cruise lines and the CDC butting heads about what exactly the phase rollout cruising here in the US should look like and what those particular requirements should really be to get cruising restarted. Which takes us to where we are. Honestly, all along, we really expected that the cruise lines, CLIA, and the CDC were working behind the scenes to come up with a reasonable plan to resume cruising. With the release of the new technical instructions from the CDC, it became apparent to us that's really not the case. It would appear the cruise lines were just as blindsided by those new updates and requirements as most cruisers were. In fact, in CLIA's response, it called for a closer cooperation and coordination among the CDC, cruise lines, and other related industries. So here we are a year from when the cruise lines temporarily paused cruising from the US. And still it's anyone's guess as to when cruising will restart. An optimistic viewpoint would say that July is possible given the statements made this week. But the cruise lines are indicating that the additional requirements put forth by the CDC make it difficult for them to implement these plans and agreements to meet that timeline. Another major hurdle is the requirement to start test cruises here in the US. Now there's plenty of evidence outside of the US that these current safety measures work. And of course the cruise lines are pushing for the test cruise requirement to be lifted. We don't need them because we've had hundreds of test cruises already in different parts of the world. And the results have clearly shown that implementing the health and safety protocols that all the cruise lines have agreed to can work and cruising can return safely. But unfortunately, the CDC has shown little interest in replacing or removing the conditional sailing order at this point. So we're still at a stalemate here in the US while the major cruise lines are looking elsewhere, including the Bahamas, the Caribbean, and Bermuda, as well as overseas to restart cruising. 
If you're like us and eager to start sailing, at this point, honestly, your best bet is to book one of these cruises originating outside of the US. As honestly, it might be a long while before you'll be able to sail from US port again. To date, Norwegian Cruise Line, Royal Caribbean, and Celebrity Cruises are among the major cruise lines, with sailings in these regions now open for booking with scheduled cruises as early as June. As for cruising from the US, we'll keep you updated as other developments occur and we'll be the first to report back as soon as we're able to cruise from the US. Now, if you like this video, we have plenty of other cruise tips and updates posted here on the channel, including our recent look at Norwegian Cruise Line's return to service plans, as well as how cruising will change due to COVID-19. Now, if you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe down below so you get notified when we put out brand new cruise and travel videos. Plus, you can reach out to us all over social media, at Eat Sleep Cruise, just to say hi, or with any of your cruise and travel questions, we'd love to hear from you.